Hello gamers and aspiring live streamers. I'm Pixel and today I'm going to share my console live stream setup with all of you. My console setup is really different than my live stream setup on my PC. I actually stream in completely different locations with different computers, so keep that in mind as you're watching this video. We're gonna be going over how to live stream from your Xbox One and your PS4 to, more specifically, Twitch TV. So let's dive on in. Here is the couch that I sit on when I live stream. I'm usually sitting here and playing on the TV up against the wall there, and I have sound actually coming through a home theater setup instead of headphones. For my mic, I actually just use the mic that came with my PS4. It's kind of cheap, but it does the trick. It does a pretty good job about not picking up the game noises that are coming out of the speakers, so I like it, and it works for me. So let's take a look at some of the hardware. I personally use an Elgato capture card. It looks like this. It's tiny, and it's fantastic. This thing works with both Mac and PC, but I actually only stream from PC, so that is what we're going to focus on today. It's capable of 1080p recording, and I love this thing. It actually hasn't really given me any problems. There's actually only four ports total on this thing, so it's really not confusing at all. You can't mess it up because they're clearly labeled HDMI in, AVN, HDMI out, and USB. First, let's go over Xbox One because it's super, super simple. You're just gonna need two HDMI cords. One is going to go from your Xbox into your Elgato. The other one is going to go from the HDMI out to your TV. Then you're gonna take the USB and plug that sucker right into your computer and you are good to go. The PS4 is gonna be a little bit more tricky. You're gonna have to add on a couple of extra components and cables to your setup to make this work to bypass HDCP. It's nothing too complicated though. My personal solution is I picked up a Monoprice DVI and SPDIF to HDMI converter. I personally got mine off of Amazon and it'll run you between $45 to $50. It's really not that large of an investment and it makes your live streaming look so much better than the on-console Twitch TV app that they have going on in there. So if you're serious about live streaming, I highly recommend you look into this, it's great. The next two things you're going to want to get, an HDMI to DVI cable as well as an optical cable. Both of these are going to be plugged into the back of your PS4 and will go into your converter box. Then you're going to take an HDMI cable that plugs into your converter box out, which goes into the Elgato in. From there, the setup is really just the same as the Xbox setup, so you can just refer back to that chart and you're just going to proceed exactly the same way. Let's take a look at software now. I've used two of the most popular live stream softwares available, OBS and XSplit. OBS is great for PC streaming. I love it because it's really lightweight. However, it is still in development, so there are some flaws to it. Although it is free, so that is a major plus. For some reason, whenever I use my webcam and I use my mic, it just desyncs the audio, so I have to manually go in and punch and delay. It's just a little annoying because sometimes it's not perfectly correct so then you get a weird desyncing over time issue so I switched to XSplit. XSplit does have a free version but you probably don't want to use it because it overlays a watermark onto your stream it's not very pretty so I would just cough up the extra cash and either get the premium version or the personal version depending on the features that you're looking for. You can actually just go into xsplit.com. You're gonna to wanna to compare the features that are right for you. Cost-wise, it ranges quite a bit, but it's not actually super expensive to get XSplit. It'll be anywhere between $8.50 a month to $2.50 a month, depending on what package you choose and how long you're signing up for the subscription. The longer you sign up, the cheaper it gets. So again, just log into their website to check it out. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at your bandwidth. You're gonna to wanna to do this by going to speedtest.net and checking your upload speed as this is the most important for broadcasting yourself and your gameplay to the internet. In general, you're going to want to leave about 25% of your bandwidth free to let your network do whatever else it has to. For example, if your upload speed is three megabits per second, you're going to want to stream around 2250 kilobytes per second. Depending on what your bitrate is, this will also give you a general ballpark figure for what your resolution will be and your frame rate will be that you can handle. I'm actually going to link a bunch of resources down here in the description box, so make sure you check those out. People have been compiling tables that will give you a good ballpark figure to start off with, depending on your CPU as well as your bitrate and upload. 
upload speed. Remember that you're going to want to test, test, and test again to make sure you tweak the settings so they'll be right for your setup. Just so you all know what I am currently working with, this is the CPU that is in the computer that is sort of like my entertainment slash dedicated console streaming PC, as well as my upload speed. And these are also the settings that I use in XSplit. So if your setup is similar to what I have, then you can use this as a starting point. Keep in mind that with bitrate, you're also going to want to take into account your Twitch TV viewers. If you are not partnered, you don't have extra encoders that will give your viewers the option to view at high, medium, and low. They will only be able to view source. So even if you have this crazy awesome PC that can handle streaming at like 6,000 bitrate, you probably don't want to do that because actually quite a bit of Twitch TV users will not have the bandwidth to actually view your stream at those settings and they'll just see a very stuttering video. I want to take it down a notch. I also have heard that Twitch TV has a hard time handling streams that are over 3500. Just play around with it, test it, and maybe get some of your friends on to help you test it and make sure that they can also view your live stream. Hopefully this video has helped you out and answered some of your questions about streaming from next-gen consoles. If you have any further questions on this topic, please leave me a comment below and I do my best to answer them. And make sure that you again look in this description box because I will have linked a lot of resources in there for you and they might be able to answer your questions as well. Also be sure to like this video if it's helped you out and make sure to subscribe to the Fragdolls channel for more videos. You can do that by clicking right up here. Do it. Do it right now. And I will catch you guys later in the next video. Bye guys! Hey guys, this is Pixel from the Frag Dolls here, and today I'm going to give you guys my first impressions of the PS4 and Xbox One.